Fish is, is one of the main uh, foodstuffs of the world. More and more people are eating fish. It's our main source of protein for many people. And what we will do is we will spend uh, different amounts of money on different types of fish. Whenever you have a large industry, a complex industry, there are many opportunities for fraud to happen. So what we're setting out to do now is to look at technologies which will not specifically measure one type of fraud, but we are looking to measure multiple types of fraud simultaneously. So we're trying to find out, is the species correct? What part of the world did that fish come from? And did that fish come from a system that was sustainable? One of the big issues that has emerged is fish fraud, particularly in tuna. In fact, the uh, United States is the world's biggest uh, consumer of tuna. The United Kingdom is the second biggest consumer of tuna. But there are massive issues about tuna, about the sustainability of tuna. Whenever you catch them using nets, think about you're also capturing other endangered species, particularly dolphins. So it's something now that the public are becoming more and more aware of. Whenever you go into your supermarket to buy your tuna, you will see that it will say line caught or pole caught to say that it came from a sustainable fishery. What we are setting out to, tr to try to find out can science uh, support that claim? And there is evidence to show that in the case of white tuna, particularly people who, who eat raw tuna, it has been substituted for a very, very low quality fish called Escalor. Now, Escalor contains a toxin, and that toxin will make you ill. And it will give you all of the classic symptoms of food poisoning. The big difference is it takes about 24 hours before the onset of the illness. So quite often you do not associate eating that fish product with your illness. So it's very, very difficult to, to track it down and to say what caused that illness in the first place. Cheating in fish has been very well known for a long time. But this particular issue is something that I personally only learned about over the last few months. And again, there will be uh, an incentive, a drive for the industry who are selling consumers fish products to start to think about, is this a possibility in their supply chains? Is there the possibility that some fraudulent activity might be happening that's actually making your customers ill? Most people will either think about measuring the proteins that are present in the fish or more looking at DNA markers. And our challenge is to say that we can actually use mass spectrometry to detect fish fraud. Nobody's done that yet. So I see that as a challenge. But an even bigger challenge when I was talking to people from the fish industry was in relation to sustainability. It's really impossible to say if something came from a sustainable fishery or not. And I actually think mass spectrometry might provide a solution to that. So what we intend to do using time of flight is to look at the entire molecular makeup of these different types of fish. Not to look at signals of 10 or 20 molecules, but 10 to 20,000. And to look at those 10 to 20,000 molecules and to tell us what makes this particular type of fish unique what makes the species unique, but also the fishing technique. Was it caught by fishermen using poles and, and, and lines, or were they caught by nets? And we think time of flight is probably the only technology which has the potential for answering that question. Whenever you start to think about how can you differentiate between a fish that was caught using a pole and a fish that was caught by a net, Lots of people say, well, there's no difference. But there is, because how the fish responds to those particular uh, challenges will be different. They will have different metabolic responses. So what we are really doing is we are measuring the metabolism of those animals when they're being caught, producing these profiles of metabolic activity. In relation to mass spectrometry, it was identified not that long ago that it has a major role to play in food science, particularly in food safety. But I think there's a growing awareness now that the technology has a major role to play in detecting food fraud. 
and that is very much about developing a range of different untargeted and targeted methodologies and those methods have to be easy to use, they have to be reliable and they have to be fast because that's exactly what the food industry needs.